Hi guys and welcome back to Technology Review. It's very good to see you again and I hope you and everyone you care about are doing well during this pandemic. Also, thanks to everyone who checks out technology through the years on YouTube, WordPress and the podcast I do on SoundCloud. Before posting it, I never expected it to get as many views as it has, so thank you for doing that. But before I get started, here's a reminder of the social medias you can follow me on. So if you want to follow my personal Twitter, it is at Lyle, and if you want to follow my Instagram, I am the real feed style. If you want to follow the business social media for technology review, they are at Tech Reviews UK with a hyphen on Twitter. The Instagram is all smaller letters technology reviews UK and you can like the Facebook page at Technology Review. So on the 8th of January this year, I celebrated my 22nd birthday. As well as the Turtle Beach headset, which I got for Christmas, but was meant to be for my birthday. I got a lot of other stuff, including a blue snowball ice microphone which you'll see a review of on here soon. But my main plan for the day was going up to VR City. VR City is a virtual reality arcade at City Side, Northern Ireland, offering single and multiplayer games and doing experiences for ages 7 and up. They have a choice of 8 VR stations, 4 VR machines, like a VR futuristic bike, space pods, a shotgun and a race car, 4 4 VR booths, and over 280 games. They have accessibility options available and great wheelchair access, as well as sensory options. But I think there's a good amount of accessibility they still need to improve on, which we will get further into later on in this video. They get a lot of different types of games, but how accessible these are, at the minute depends on your level of disability. I spent most of my time playing the roller coaster games, which you get access to by the space pods. Can they include small and big roller coasters and even a ghost train one where various ghosts jump up at your face? But what I liked about these ones was how I was able to control them by moving my head. This way of playing made them more realistic and creepier. And you can see what I'm talking about in this clip here.
later on, I got to try a shadow one, but I didn't enjoy it as much as there was no way for me to control it using accessibility controls. This is where I feel that virtual reality in general needs to try harder in including disabled people, which should be becoming easier with the rise in popularity of accessible controllers. First of all, you need to install a hoist so that wheelchair-dependent people can get from their chairs to whichever VR machine they want, even if it's not an overhead one, but one on wheels, which I would prefer. But you also need to research into accessible controls for those who come in and need accessibility options, because not every wheelchair dependent person can play games in the same way as their able-bodied peers. Such options could include voice control, head controls, for even accessible switches. But I am more than happy to give advice on what all is available and what would be easier. Nonetheless, I was able to play a large variety of games for when, uh, from when I was there and the staff were very, very nice. But with just a few more adjustments, I could get even better. Either way, I enjoyed my time and overall, I will give the city 4 stars.